This video is going to have a look at maximum flow um, using an alternative method to minimum cut. A lot of students find minimum cut um, to trial and error and therefore don't really ever know whether they've got the right answer. So this method might take a bit longer in some circumstances, but it will mean that if you do it correctly, you will actually arrive at the correct answer each time. So let's start with a simple um, example here. So obviously we're trying to find the maximum amount that can move from the source to the sink at any one time. So the way that we um, use this method is actually by looking at all the pathways between the source and the sink. And I find it's a lot easier to actually label the vertices so that you can list the pathways um, that you need to do for the methods. So we'll just quickly do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is list firstly the pathways from source to sink. So I'm going to start with going from A through B, C, and then to G at the sink. So A, B, C, G. And what I need to know is actually note down the shortest um, vertex or shortest um, edge on that particular path, which in this case is 2. The next step is then to subtract 2 or that minimum value from each of those um, edges on that pathway. So we subtract two from each of those and we're left with that. Next, we want to find an alternative pathway going through the graph that doesn't include an edge of zero weight. So the next pathway I could use could be A through B, D, C, G. So A, B, D, C, G. And again, noting the smallest weight on that pathway, which in this case is 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from each of those edges. And I end up with just one edge with a weight on it. The next pathway, not using any zero edges. So this time I've exhausted the pathways through B. So I'm going to head from A down to E, across to F and then to G. So A, E, F, G. And my, short, my smallest weight on that is 3. And I subtract 3 from everything on that path. Now, I do have two edges left that I haven't used. However, in order to use those pathways, I would have to travel through um, an edge with a zero weight. So even if I did go from A down to E to D, at this point I would be travelling on a zero weight edge to get to C. So it's not required because the smallest weight on that pathway would be zero. Subtracting zero makes no difference. So once I've gotten to the point where no additional pathway will actually allow me to subtract any further values, I've done enough work. And in order to work out what the maximum flow is, I take these values that I've subtracted, add them together, and that becomes my maximum flow. So in the case of this example, my maximum flow would be 8. So comparing that to the traditional method of minimum cut, we can see we do arrive at the same answer. So looking at this one, if we take our cut at the beginning as a baseline, so we get 5 and 4 is 9. Our cut at the end, 6 and 3, also 9. A cut through the center, we end up with 9 as well. However, if we cut through this 2, 3, 3, 3, this one doesn't count because it's going against the flow and we end up with 8, which is our minimum um, cut, so therefore our maximum flow. So you can see we arrive at the same answer, however the trial and error element has been taken out. If we now look at a slightly more complicated example, you can see that in these cases sometimes this method of actually listing the paths can be an advantage. Here we've got a lot more edges, so therefore a lot more paths, however you're, you're taking out that element of trial and error. So. Let's consider um, our first few parts. So if I go from X to A, up to G, across to F and Y, and here in this case we're assuming X is our um, source and Y is our sink or our finish, where we want to end up. So along this pathway here, our smallest weight 
is 2. And so we'll subtract 2 from everything there. Now we can see by doing that, our first actual edge on that pathway from x to a makes that weight 0. So there are no other possible pathways leading out if we start at x and go straight to a. So we really only have to consider now any pathways going from x down to c. So if we went x, c, d, y, our smallest weight on that is 5. So let's subtract that. And we end up again with the only edge leading out of x as a 0. So now we don't even have to consider any of the other pathways on the inside because we've already arrived at what we know will be our maximum flow of 7. So even though it looks quite complicated, we've taken um, out that element and we've arrived at our answer actually quite quickly using this method. If we look finally here at um, a past VCAR question, this is in the 2011 um, exam two, and some of you will have seen similar questions on some of the practice exams um, from 2012 onwards. It was quite a difficult question for students in this year because it was set up differently to other max flow um, problems that we've seen before. The question in this paper asked students to identify the maximum flow for each outlet individually. So, so if we just look at outlet 1 to begin with and treat that as our, our sink, our source will only be um, source 1. And that's because there is no water that can get from source 2 back into the source 1 side of this um, network, if you like. So, same idea. Consider the pathways from source to sink. So if we travel across the top of the graph first through the 400 and 300, and the smallest value here would be 300, so we'll just note that down and subtract from each of those edges. So we end up with a 100. A second possible pathway, still across this 400 here, down and across, and the smallest weight there, 100. So we'll subtract that from those three edges and that gives us a zero and so now finally we can travel down the 800 across the 300 and that final 300 there and again the smallest edge smallest weight is 300 subtract that from the remaining values there and now we've exhausted all possible pathways and we've arrived at a total um, weight or a maximum flow there of 700 from outlet 1. So outlet 1 gives us a maximum flow of 700. Now when we go to consider source 2, we start in the same way, but we also have this edge of 200 coming into the graph from source 1. So let's use that pathway first so that we don't forget to include it. So Start from scratch and from source 1, if we travel down this pathway here, I could then go across the top and out at outlet 2. And the smallest weight on that pathway is 200. So we'll note that down first and then subtract from everything on the pathway. So that gives us quite a few zero edges. And note, it also gives, and that one would be 600, it also gives a zero here at the edge that's coming in. So we now only have to consider pathways that start at source two. So we've eliminated any other possible pathways coming from source one. Okay, so to continue from source two, I'm going to go across this 100. Although I cannot go across the 200 because it's already a zero. So I'm actually going to come down the three to here, down that 300. And across. So the smallest value on that path is 100 and I'll subtract that from the weights. 400 there, 200 and a 0. And so now again I've exhausted that first pathway so I can come across this 300 for my second. I'm going to continue all the way across the graph and down here and the smallest value on that pathway 300. So 
makes that a zero, makes that 100, makes that 300, and 100 there. Sorry, that would be 100, subtracting 3. And finally, we have a pathway running down this 100 across the bottom. The smallest value there, 100. And that gets rid of any other possible pathways. So we can see when we add those together, we get a total of 700 through that particular network as our maximum flow. So outlet 2 is 700. So as you can see, that method, whilst it looks a bit messy, as long as you practice it and you understand what you're doing, and I find writing down the pathways is actually a lot easier than just tracing over the graph multiple times, um, you can always get an answer, no matter how complicated it looks. And for those of you who really struggle with the trial and error element in some of the networks applications, hopefully this will help you out and make you feel a bit more confident with these types of questions.